In this video, I want to introduce you to using Flask Alembic in Flask in 2025 and going forward. So the reason why you use Flask Alembic is to create migrations. And there's already a Flask migrate library out there, which is pretty popular. But the problem is it kind of depends on the old version of SQL Alchemy to work well. So if you're using a more modern SQL Alchemy, especially through something like Flask SQL Alchemy Lite, which I'll be using in this video, then Flask Alembic is the preferred approach to creating migrations going forward. So in this video, I'll show you how to do everything with Flask Alembic so you can get it working in your projects. Okay, so to start, I'm going to create a Flask project from scratch so you can see everything that it takes to get Flask Alembic set up. So what I'll do is I'll create a directory called app. So this is where everything is going to be. And I'll install what I need. So I'll do UV init first, and I'll do UV add Flask, and then Flask SQL Alchemy Lite. Okay, so I'll add those two packages. And of course, because this video is about Flask Alembic, I'll add that. So Flask Alembic, just like that. Okay, so I have what I need installed. And what I want to do inside of the app directory is create a dunder init file. And inside of here, I'll add the create app function. And let me go ahead and create the other files that I need. So a models.py for my models, obviously. And then extensions.py. This is where I'll instantiate the extensions that I need. So let me go over to create app and just set up a Flask app. So from Flask, import Flask, and I'll create the create app function. I'll instantiate Flask inside of this function and I'll return the app object. So by doing that, I should be able to do UV run Flask run, and I can, so that's working properly. So I'll stop that. Inside of models.py, I want to create a model. So what I'll do is I'll say from sqlalchemy.orm import I need the declarative base class. So declarative base, I need mapped and I need mapped underscore column. And then from SQL Alchemy, I need to import integer and string because I'll have an integer column and a string column. So I'll start by creating the base class by inheriting the declarative base here. So this is all standard uh, SQL Alchemy stuff. And then I'll come back to this because I'm going to use the base for something in extensions.py. So in extensions.py, I want to instantiate both SQL Alchemy and Flask Alembic. So I'll say from Flask SQL Alchemy Lite, I want to import the SQL Alchemy class. And then also from Flask Alembic, I'm going to import the Alembic class. And then from dot model. So my models file, I want to import that base class that I just created. And the reason why I have to import that is because the Alembic object needs access to that. So let me instantiate SQL Alchemy first. So DB equals SQL Alchemy. And then Alembic is going to equal Alembic. And then I need to pass in to the metadata field base dot metadata. Okay, so even though I haven't defined any other models yet by connecting the base to Alembic, Alembic will be able to detect all of the models that I have. So now let's set this up in the Dunder init. So in Dunder init, I want to import from uh, extensions. I want to import the um, DB and Alembic objects, and then I can call init app on both of those. So DB dot init app pass in the Flask app, and then Alembic dot init underscore app pass in the app object. So these are typical. So Flask Alembic is just like any other Flask extension. And since I'm here, I want to set up the configuration for the database. So for SQL Alchemy engines, I'm going to say my default engine. So I need a dictionary here. My default engine is going to be a SQLite database. So this is a SQLite three slashes and a db.sqlite three. That will put it in an instance directory. And then also I need the config for Alembic. So Alembic context is what I want to configure and it is going to be a dictionary. And I want to use this render as batch key and set it to true. So the idea here is when you're using SQLite, you can't directly alter a table and 
drop columns, for example. So what this renders batch will do is it will take commands that normally wouldn't work in SQLite and convert them to a form where it can execute those against a SQLite database. If your database is like Postgres, then you don't need this. But because I'm using SQLite in this video, I need render as batch to support the things that SQLite can't do on its own. So now that I have everything set up, uh, what I want to do is I want to start by creating a model. So now we can finally get into the migrations part, which is the point of this video. So I'll create a model called user, pretty standard model in a lot of apps. And the table name for this will be users. Okay, so I want to have three columns. I want to have an ID column, I want to have a username column, and I want to have a password column. Okay, so for the ID, this is going to be a string. So I'll use the map class and the type string. And this is going to be a map column as well because this is going to be uh, the primary key. So I'll put integer here and primary key equals true. And then for username, um, this will also be a string. So map string. And I realize this should be an int, not a string. So ID is an int, not a string. I put integer here, but for some reason I put string over there. So int integer. This is actually a string. A username is a string. And then mapped column string and I'll just specify how many characters the username could be so up to 80 characters and for this one I want it to be unique equals true meaning that a username can only exist in that table once and then for the password I'll use mapster again and I really don't need a map column but I'll just use it and I'll say the password can be up to 80 characters long as well okay so now I have a model so now I want to think about how can I migrate this uh, using the typical migration process so let's run through it. So the first thing I need to do is I need to type in UV run and then the thing I want to run. So I want to run flask DB revision and then init. Okay. And I get an error here and it just happens to be init as well. But the reason is, is because I forgot the init underscore app on the DB init app. So let's do init again as the name of the revision. And now everything works. So when I run that, I see I get a directory called migrations. And then if I look at the one migration that's in there, we'll see the steps that it's taking to generate the users table in the database. So it's calling the create table operation. It's adding the three columns that I want with the properties that I want. It's making the ID a primary key. And then for the downgrade down here, it's just undoing that, which is just dropping the tables. So let's start by upgrading and then we can take a look at what happens in the database. Okay, so in addition to generating this, because my SQLite database didn't already exist before, it should exist now. So I have this instance directory, which is the standard place where the SQLite databases get put in a Flask app. And I'll open up the database file and type tables here. So I have one table already, and it's called Alembic version. And the idea behind this table is it keeps track of the migration version you're on. So right now it's empty because I haven't performed the first migration. Um, but as I perform migrations, this table will be populated with data. So I'll come back to the database. So the first thing I want to do to make something happen in the database, in addition to having that Alembic table, is I want to run an upgrade. So I'll do UV run flask DB upgrade. Run that. And we see it ran the upgrade. So let's go back into the database and do dot tables again. And now we have a user's table. And the reason why is because it took everything in this file under upgrade and it ran it, which is just creating a table. So let's go ahead and make a change. Let's close out this migration and let's go to models. And let's say we want to add another field. Let's say we want to add an email field to our user table. So we can do that. This will be a string as well. And then I'll use mapped column. And then for the string, I'll say the email can be up to 120 characters. That's a long email, but that's fine. And I'll say each email needs to be unique in the table. So what I can do is I can run UV run flask DB revision and then give it a comment. So add email column. I'll run that and then it should have generated a new file for me. So add email column here. If we look in upgrade, we see op batch alter table. So this is because I have the render as batch on. In this particular case, it's not necessary to run the batch command to add a column in SQLite, although it is necessary to drop it. So here in the downgrade, this is necessary for dropping a column in SQLite, although um, to keep it consistent, it looks like they have the batch for both updates and downgrades. So we see here it's going to create the column. 
So what I'll do is I'll do UV run flask DB upgrade, and we see we get an error. So this is a good example of showing you a case where the migration doesn't always work right out of the box. I know a lot of times it seems like every migration that you create or every revision that you create um, will work, but that's not the case. So the issue here is it needs a name. So right now the name is none. So I can either create a name in the model, but I can also modify the migration file. So don't feel afraid to modify their migration file if necessary, although you probably won't have to do it most of the time. So I'll call this a uh, unique email. How about user unique email? So users unique email, and then I'll just copy this name and I'll place it uh, for the constraint name here. And then I'll run DB upgrade again. And now we see that it was successful. So now let me go back into the database and I'll do dot schema. And this one will show us that our email column is on here. So up to 120 characters and it is not null. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. So if I wanted to undo that uh, email field, let's say it was a mistake or you know it was a bad path that I went down, all I have to do is do UV run flask DB downgrade. So the other command, and then I can go into my database and then I don't want to select, I want to do schema for users. And now we see there is no email there because it removed the email thing. And then what I can do is I can look at the Alembic version. So select star from Alembic version, if I can spell that correctly. And we see it's 175 and then, well, it actually it ends in 35. So 35 here is the first revision that I created. And the second one is no longer being applied. So after downgrading, because I messed up something, I could simply delete this file and then just move on and then just create a new migration and everything would be fine. So it takes a little bit of time to get used to working with uh, migrations and you know creating these revisions and upgrading and downgrading. So I recommend you practice with every project that you create if you're not familiar with this. So even if you're creating a simple project, just go through the steps of using Flask Alembic to create your migrations. So when you have a much more involved project where you want to keep track of your migrations over time, you'll know how to do everything. So you've seen me write Modern SQL Alchemy in this video. And if you're interested in learning more about what modern SQL Alchemy looks like. I have this video that talks about SQL Alchemy in 2025 that you can watch 